I gotta come up with some. My girl says she wanna some Dolce Gabbana. Baby, how you doing? I'm alright. How are you? I'm doing good. What the fuck? What the fuck? Hey, how you going? You we just lost our viewers. And they coming back. I see them coming back. Okay. All right. Yeah, they the, the connection got lost. I don't know what happened. How you doing? What's up, love? All right, so tell me about you. Tell me everything. I see you from North Carolina. Tell me everything about North Carolina and you. All right. <clears throat> we'll start by me being born and raised in NC. Uh-huh. We'll start with that, you know. Um Winston Salem NC, that is. Trey Foe. You know what I'm saying? I was born in Greensboro. Mm -hmm. Yep. NC, you know, that's the hometown, you know what I'm saying? I'm putting on for that. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. So oh, yeah. when you started in music, okay, you the growing up and all of that. When did you start it in music? And when you started, was it like, oh, I want to be professional or a rapper? Or did you just start like hanging out with your homeboys? Everybody's just kicking flows. How did it start for you? Well, it started for me at a young age. You know, I gravitated towards music. Um, I wrote my first rap when I was like 10. Uh -huh. And once I did that, I didn't take it serious back then. I uh -huh. just played around with it growing up through school, you know, beat on the tables, freestyle, on the lockers, all that good stuff. And then um, I finally decided to take it serious in 2016 when I decided to move from Winston-Salem to Raleigh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And Oh, okay. Ever since then, ever since then, I've just been going hard, giving my all, you know, trying to do this thing from the ground up and mm -hmm. basically just chase my dream and, you know, follow my destiny. Okay. So when you say that you're chasing your dream, what is your dream? What is, What is your destiny and dream that you're chasing? Well, first off, I want to be able to, um, I want to be able to be a person that people can lean on, come to in time of need, you know, mm -hmm. um, all all over time, you know, I, I've actually had a lot on my back, you know, and reached out, helped people, you know, try to try to be a humble person, you know, um, and just do that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So when doing your music, do you write first or do you just... Um... How, what's the process? What's the process of getting a track, a hit done? It's a couple of different processes when it comes to me doing my music. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I freestyle. Sometimes I'll, you know, just listen to the beat over and over and over and over until mm -hmm. I get an idea. I like, most of the time, I like to start by writing a hook. That way I know where the song is going to go. And I, I try to focus on making hits, um, not just regular songs. You know, I'm trying to make every record for it to possibly be that one that's going to go. Right, right. Yeah. So yeah. when, who, who's in your playlist? Who did you start listening to music? And what who was your major influence when you was listening to music that made you feel... I can do this, and I can even probably do it better than that. Mm. I started out. Um, I started out. My first, my my first favorite rapper was X, DMX. All then right. I, yeah. Then after that, it was Fifty Cent. Then after that, it was Ti. Then after mm -hmm. that, I guess you could say J Cole. You know, right. that's about right. the people that I you know look up to and. They kind of like gave me inspiration to actually pursue music and tell my story, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. All right. That's what's up. So what is your story? What's the story that's in your message of, of your music? What What's it all about? What do you want people to know about you? Basically, um, <clears throat> I've been very fortunate, you know, um, Growing up, I had a mama and a father in the household. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, I actually, this music and this path that I chose is actually the path that I chose, mm-hmm. you know, um, for the good and the bad. And um, basically, once I chose this path, I decided to just go all in with it and give my all to it. Oh, okay, so your music is basically your story of life. So, yeah, my story. I'm, I'm, I'm basically, you know, um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a local artist coming up, and uh-huh. I want people to know that, you know, despite on what people say to you, you know, mm-hmm. you can do whatever you really put your mind to. I know people say that all the time, but I, I totally agree with that theory. Right. And my story is basically, you know, I got three little girls. I'm out here trying to put my music out and let the world hear it, you know, and definitely put a positive message, you know, as far as doing the right thing, keeping negative energy away from you, um, having a reason, having a purpose, having a motive. You right. Know, um, and my drive, my kids inspire me, and they they drive me to go hard. You know, um, and I know, I know. Basically, when you're doing music, you got to put out what the people want to hear. Right. And, and people have to be able to relate to it. So, I kind of tell my story in certain records. You know, if you go back to my first project, part of my environment, P O N E. Um, you know, it's a lot about my upbringing and, you know, some of the things I was involved in coming up. Right, and, right. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, so when you say that is a part of your environment, what you coming up in, and then you said that you got three daughters. Now that you have three daughters, has your music changed up? Like after you had the first daughter, but you still, you know, you hardcore, you doing what you got to do. Now you got three daughters, little princesses. Oh, Does yeah. that change the style of writing? Or is it like, well, they're young now. When they get older, they'll understand. Or, you know what, I got three daughters. Let me write differently now. Right, right, right. Um, I have to say, with my music and my daughters, it doesn't really change, you know, what I put out or what I put I'm down. Not- I never been the type to really degrade women or, you know, talk down on women. You know, I got a mother, a sister, you know, and like you said, three little girls. So when I mm-hmm. when I'm doing my music, you know, I try to keep it away from belittling black women at that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All right. Absolutely. All right. That that's good. That's good. Cause when you hear so much music coming out and you hear you know, I hear stuff sometimes, and I be dancing and rocking to it and whatnot, but sometimes I be like, oh, my God, <laughs> did they just say that? And then we answer to it as women. When we accept that type of stuff and we answer to it, we make it acceptable for it to be all right for certain things to happen in life. So that was a great answer. So now that – are you in the studio now working? Oh, matter of fact, let's talk about that show you get ready to do tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I got a show tomorrow. We're going to be at Club Rebel. We opening up for Key Glock. Shout out to mm. Greg and Jones for having us. Um, we're going we gonna to put on, we're going to make a statement. I'm going to show my ass, really. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to show my ass. I'm going to get there, but I'm going to try to because I got that interview tomorrow that I'm going to do also. But with the music that's happening right now, do you feel that your okay, you know how everybody picks up a style and then they run with the style? Right. How do you separate yourself from the style, the flow, like the Drakes and the Migos? How do you separate yourself from not having that same thing that everybody does? What makes you stand out? Basically, uh if you listen to my music, mm-hmm. honestly, I don't hear myself sounding like no one else. And mm-hmm. that's just my personal opinion. I right. feel like I'm in my own lane. I try to have a different approach depending on the style of the beat. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And when I'm making records, I want them to be straight, straightforward. Right. Truthful. Right. Right. It got to be, because when you start rapping and singing and doing lies and stuff, it catches up to you. Or somebody was there with you and be like, nah, I didn't go that way. <laughs> But you're right. rapping about. So uh, you got to keep it real because, you know, if it's your real life story, then if you're telling lies, then it's a real life lie. Then. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Right. So to the young guys out here that's trying to get into music or not even trying to get into music, what is a message to young guys that are maybe just carrying on in the street? And then with all this stuff that's going on, what kind of message do you give them? All I'm going to say is, mm -hmm. all that trying to be tough, that ain't it. You know, uh, believe in what you stand for. Mm -hmm. Don't let nobody step on your toes. You know, be a man. Right. Walk with your chest out, with your head held high. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself first and foremost. It start with self-belief. Right, right. So with all this craziness that going on, has it been a distraction to you? Because when you hear people say, oh, because I um, was in quarantine, I got to know myself better. Do you feel that it was a distraction or was it like a help in your writing in the studio process or, hey, it didn't affect me. I know what's going on, but I'm still doing me. I'm going to answer that honestly. Mm -hmm. um, with everything that's going on in the world, as far as the pandemic, it, it's, it's a terrible thing. You know, it's uncertain times we're living in. Mm -hmm. but it, it hasn't really impacted me or really affected me to that extent. Right. Um, I, I don't know too many people who have passed away from COVID. Um... I know very few people who have actually caught the virus, um, right. but I do I do recommend everybody to stay safe, wear a mask, um, social distance, practice that, you know, wash your hands, mm -hmm. all the stuff that they're telling us to do. You know, I agree with that. But right. as far as it, like, impacted me, it kind of impacted me as far as, like, being able to move around. Like, they're playing my song at 102 Jams back home uh -huh. and see and I ain't even able to do any shows back home right now based off the, the state being on restrictions and curfew right. and lockdown and all that so it has to be like that but as as far as everyday life I'm, I'm still doing me trying to provide uh -huh. my family every day trying to come up with something right right <laughs> Pun intended. So if, you, if you wasn't doing music what do you think that, what would you be doing? If it was either doing, music or what? If I wasn't doing music, I'd be um, running some kind of company. Definitely. Um, I, I've i always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I've always mm -hmm. wanted to be a outside of the box thinker. Right. Um, so, yeah, definitely. I, I see myself, you know, um, owning a company and, and working real hard with my hands. I had a company before, you know, I, don't, mm -hmm. I no longer do that, but yeah, I'd definitely be an entrepreneur. Calling calling the shots, making my own mm -hmm. schedule, but right. also, also working hard. Right, right. That's, and, and I see that you say that a lot, so I just want to say that's a good thing to um, everybody that's tuning in right now. Uh, we're talking with Ty let me say your name the right way. Ty Moolah. Is that the right way? Yeah, people say Ty Moolah, Ty Moolah, either way. Okay. We're talking with Ty Moolah tonight. He's down here in Atlanta. He's going to be doing um, a show tomorrow at Club Revel in Atlanta. So if everybody who's in Atlanta, y'all make sure y'all um, go out tomorrow and just so, and support and catch oh, his well. show. You know what? Have a good time, vibe with him. Um, I'm just so excited because they came in tonight and they was like, "Hey, we in town, Bobby? Let's do the interview." And I really appreciate um, 
the love and support. And hey, manager, I see you sitting over there. So how are you doing? How, right, right, right. So how is how important it is to have a manager? What what role is the manager in the artist life? The manager guides the artist. As, as an artist, you want to have a manager. The industry won't ever take you serious if you don't. Uh -huh. I don't think a lot of people understand how important that is. I have a lot of knowledge of the industry. I've been in the industry several years. And uh -huh. uh, artists coming into this industry needs a manager. They need somebody to guide them and teach them the business. And uh -huh. Ty is... We, we we like we very close. So he picks up well. He he absorbs everything like a sponge and mm -hmm. he very serious about what he does and you know it's an honor to manage him. He's a really, really flourishing artist, so to speak. All right, all right, that's what's up. So when you say this needs to be done, it's done. Because sometimes I know I, I had a few artists sometimes I'd be telling them stuff, do this, do that, and they'd be like, ah, so when you say, I need you to do this, I need you to be here, those things are covered? Those things are covered. Me and Ty work pretty good together, very, actually very well together. He's hungry for what he wants. He knows what he wants. He goes to get it. <laughs> if I need him in the studio, if it's 6 in the morning, he's going to beat me there. We race each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so he's, he's very, very on time. He's a hard worker. He doesn't. He's not going to come in the studio and just excuse my French bullshit around. He's going right. to get the job done. We come. We, we go, we'll come out to the studio in, in a day or so with five, six songs. You know, he he has a very, very good work ethic. Mhm. Mm mhm. And, and I'm proud of him. He does a lot. All right. All right. That's great when you have a manager that's on your team that got you know your back and everything. Because sometimes you hear the horror stories out here. Where it's just horror stories. There's horror stories all over life. So, you know, exactly. so that's great when you have somebody that's working with you and for you. So, all you independent artists out there that is watching, make sure you get a manager, someone that you trust, that you build a rapport with, that, you know, when they say things to you, whether you want to do it or not, you know that you're going to do it because that's the manager and that's what their job is to lead you into the right steps. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, Ty, with young artists in the industry out here now, what do you feel or do you feel that they're missing something why they just get one hit and they just go on and you don't it's, hear from them no more? Is that for me or is that for him? Uh, that's for both of y'all. Both of y'all can answer that because that's, um, a, you know, for both of y'all to answer. What makes an artist just have that one hit you know, what are they not doing? Oh, I I really don't want to speak on that too much, honestly, because okay. I ain't got too far yet, you know. Uh -huh. um, yeah, my song hit the radio, but I'm not taking that to the head or nothing. I'm just trying to keep moving, moving silently, hitting hard, you know. Um, I like the show versus um, doing a lot of talking, you know. I like to walk the walk. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. That's up. I think I think I can make it up. I think I might can help you with that. I think a lot of artists just want to show off. They don't want to build their work ethic. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do this overnight. It's not going to happen overnight. When me and Todd first started this thing, you know, I told him, just give me time and I'll get you there. Mm -hmm. He put that trust in me and I put it in him. And we started right. working as a team. It's a team effort. It's not going to work. You cannot do it by yourself. It's not going to happen. Right. It's not going right. to happen. And if you don't get on the radio when you first start doing music, you got to keep mm -hmm. striving for it. You got to work for it. It doesn't happen overnight. I mean, I think a lot of artists don't realize that. They just mm -hmm. think they're going to jump on a record and they're going to blow up tomorrow. It's not going to happen. Right, right. And you have to right. learn the business as well. So Ty is a businessman too. Right, right. He takes it very serious. So we work really good together. But it's not going to happen overnight. A lot of artists just don't understand that. And a lot of people just don't want to they don't want to understand how to work with a producer. They don't want mm -hmm. to understand how to work with management. They don't want to take mm -hmm. any direction. They want to think they know everything. And um, a few times you might bump heads. 
but you know you have to learn to respect each other and we have a very 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 good respect level towards each other right he and, right. He and i do anyway that that's great to hear because you know sometimes i don't know i haven't made that type of money and when you hear about money it changes the person so how do you keep him level that when it blows up you're still that same person well of course you're going to change because you're going up to a next level but how do you keep not having a big swole head and that to keep the same person that you started yeah i i i'm gonna stay the same you know, i'm gonna stay the same huh <laughs> So when when you make it, because you definitely are going to be worldwide famous, what do you think is the first thing you want to buy? And then a couple of years from that, I'm going to come back and say, did you buy that first thing that you said you was going to get? So you know how everybody said, oh, when I blow up, this is what I'm going to do. When I make my money, I'm going to go here, I'm going to buy. What, what's the first thing you feel you're going to do when you get to that point? Can you hear me? I can't hear anything that you're saying. Or did I freeze? <laughs> Can you, I can't hear anything that you're saying. I I can't hear you. <laughs> We're having such a great bad connection today. All right. You have a lot of fans out here and to everybody that's watching. I'm Booby Taylor. I do interviews on IG. Um, I also I'm trying to do interviews on the radio at Strongbox <laughs> Radio on Wednesday from 2 to 4. So I'm going to need y'all to step that information so we can make that happen as well. Um, y'all know I give all glory and honor to God that makes everything happen in my life. Can you hear me now? I can't hear you. Can I can't hear what? Okay, so um, if y'all got a story to tell, hit me up and let me know, you know, worldwide, worldwide stories all over the place. I was out last night um, at the bar, the Freaky Hair Show on Canada Road, Ferga Barber does the barbershop battle. Um, I think they're going to do it once a month. Tim and Goldilocks Nisi, um, hey, it was going down yesterday. Okay, let's see if we can get him back up again. Okay. The internet just want to play tricks on us tonight. But anyway, y'all know who I am. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah, we back in now. Right, that's what's up. That's what's up. The internet is just doing whatever they want to do tonight, so... <laughs> It's just so much going on. So, so how you like it down here in Georgia? So, are you in just for the show, and you're gonna go back home? No, uh, we're gonna stay a couple of nights. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a holiday weekend, so yeah, we're gonna stay a few nights. Do All some right. head working and building with a lot All of right. days. All right, I gotta work on the weekend. I mean, for the holiday. So, I hope I can get to meet up with you. And if I can't meet up with you this time, then maybe I can meet up with you another time. So I usually ask people if you was a flavor, what flavor would you be? What 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 would be like your sauce, your flavor? <laughs> hey, that that's that caught me off guard. That question right there. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say Polynesian sauce because I think that's the best sauce in the world. All right, Polynesian sauce. Yeah, that's the one that's at Chick Fil A, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like that. Yeah. All right. All right. So, um, 
Hey, if you got something to spit, uh, do you sing too, or are you just a rapper? No, nah, I just rap. Oh, okay, all right. Well, now that I brought that up, you got something for us tonight? Yeah, I got you. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. Go a little something yeah. like this. Empty the duffel bag, fill up the safe. Throw on my J's and then jump in the Mercedes. Thinking the day I might buy real estate. Then go lay on my bitch in the A. Count out this money and get a little face. Possible go bothers, you know it's the ace. Blowing these rats, watch the flesh in your face. I got fans in the A, but I come from the trait. Money stretched like a limousine. I got money that came from the Philippines. I got old 20s from 2013. Blue hunters feeling like Billy Jean. Yeah, that's a little sound, sound, you know what I'm saying, for y'all. Uh, Boss Moves Volume 1 about to drop mm -hmm. real soon, probably next month. I got a lot of videos in store, you know what I'm saying? So if you like that little, them couple of bars right there, mm -hmm. you in for a real treat when I drop Boss Moves Volume 1. All right, I can't wait to hear it, but I, I'm going to be definitely looking out for it. So where's all your music? Let everybody know how they can find you on every station out here. All right, um, my music on all the platforms. You can start with YouTube, um, Ty Mula, um, mm -hmm. Apple Music, Ty Mula, Spotify, Tidal, um, SoundCloud, just about any platform you name. I got music on there, product of my environment, and I got the single come up with something, definitely. We just uh -huh. put that out a couple months ago, and it's it's... It's, it's, it's really building a buzz right now. So All right. All right. That's what's up. So um, back to the music. I had asked this question before because, you know, a, a lot of rappers, they figure freestyling. I'm going to just freestyle and then I'm going to write it down and that's a hit. Then another freestyler told me that freestyling is a gift that they could just even hear the track in their head and just walk into the studio without ever writing and just write a hit just off their head. So how do you feel about freestyling versus writing or is there a difference? Um, I'm going to say it all depends on the artist. Mm -hmm. Me, me, I I do a lot of writing. You know, I prefer to write because when you write something, it's going to come out exactly how you want it to, when you want it to, you know. When you freestyling, yeah, freestyling is definitely a gift, you know. Um, it takes time. You got to practice, you know, when you're alone with your homies, you know, wherever. You got to practice freestyling. But if you want to make a hit to me, I feel like you need to put the time and the effort into it by, you know, going back to the basics with the pen and the pad mm -hmm. and actually digging deep for what you're trying to put out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I definitely say, um, but like I said, it all depends on the artist because I know a couple artists that just go in the studio and just, you know, freestyle. They do a take, a couple bars, punch, 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 which that's cool, but I'd rather, I'd rather plan ahead, right? You know, that way when I'm going to the stool, I'm not wasting no time or money. You right. know, I'm going in there prepared. I got my stuff memorized. And I'm I'm, I'm going in there to try to make a hit. You know, right. I ain't, ain't, this ain't for play play. Uh, right, right. Right. I ain't playing about this. I got a family to feed. I'm going out here and I'm going to make it happen. So do you think people waste a lot of time in studios? Because, you know, when I had a studio one time, we would just be sitting around. We would be almost in there for like two days. We yeah, the studio, <laughs> yeah, the studio, the studio can turn into a hangout spot sometimes. Uh huh. You know, uh -huh. People use it as a hangout spot, chill. You know, we, you don't want to go home and chill at the studio. But me, I like to just go to the studio and work. I don't even like a lot of people at my sessions. Uh -huh. You know, I, I like to be focused because, like I said, time is money. You know, and I ain't mm -hmm. there to waste no time or play play. I'm. I'm I'm there with a motive and intention, and mm -hmm. I like to get it done, and I ain't trying to leave till it's done. Right, right, right. So I know um you when you said you have three daughters, I'm pretty sure they're like real younger and stuff. Do you feel that 
they're going to, of course, they hear dad do the music and stuff like that. Do you feel that you're going to um, push them towards being into music or will you let them gravitate to it and make their own decision, knowing that what you know about the music industry? I'm definitely the type that's going to let them gravitate towards it. I'm not going to force it on them. You know, um, but all my daughters, it's out there. All my daughters like music. You know, they love hip hop, R and B. You know, they just musically inclined. Everyone in my family, everybody like music in my family. Oh, uh, they um, probably like I said, I would right now. <laughs> huh? I said they probably writing a couple of songs right now. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. They, my my youngest, she she know all my songs. All right, you all know, right. She can, she can actually be my little hype girl. You know, she get a couple <laughs> more years on her. You know, uh, I got three daughters, though. I just wanted to let you know, Destiny, Malia, Lauren, 11, 6, and 2. Oh, my God. Princesses, those are beautiful names. 11, 6, and 2. You got your hands full. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. All right, that's gorgeous. I know they're beautiful. I can't wait to see a picture of them one day and everything. Uh, watching them grow up. Because now that I know you, so I'm going to be watching to see them grow up. I'm going to hear a lot more from you and everything like that. What's your message to the world one more time? What you want everybody to know about you? Um, I'm solid. Despite what you heard, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I got a good background, a good upbringing, you know, um, like I said, I'm doing this for a purpose, I'm doing this for a reason, you know, I ain't no okay cap my raps, if I say it, I either done did it, or it's about to get done, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, it's just simple as that, you know, right. um, I'm coming, you know, I'm coming, I'm hungry, I'm starving, you know, um, I got a lot of heat in the vault, Baltimore right. Volume 1, I'm going to market it um, to the extreme because cause right. I need I need to be heard. So I'm, I'm going to try to let my project speak for itself because oh, I got yeah. a lot of hits and a lot of features, and it's, it's going to be dope. I want to so say something to Whiskers uh -huh, Excuse me? Uh -huh, you said you want to say something. I said, go ahead. We listening. Yeah, we got somebody. Uh -huh. We got some Whiskers Furnace on there that's making these compliments. I don't know if you saw them. But I was asked, I was asked to be here. So that's what's wrong with this game right now. It's all that hating and stuff. We're professionals, and I was asked to be here by the interviewer, Winston's finest. You know. And you know what? I, you and know when I see Karen. something and stuff that goes on, some stuff you just don't pay attention to. I don't. When, yeah, we're not going to. We're not. We're not going to trip on that because. Um, uh huh. They're, they're calling artists, you know, your, your tampering is what you're doing. So since you brought that up, Ty has a deal, and uh, that's how he's on the radio and stuff like that because he handles his business. So, you know, if, you got, if you're not handling your artists the right way, you can't bring that to us. So, you know, don't come in here talking about that negative stuff. We're just going to brush that off. But you want to let them know that you asked me to be here? Oh, yeah, I, de I definitely did that. When I was talking with you earlier, um, I said, are you going to be there also? And um, I, I guess if Ty didn't want you to be there, he would have said, nah, man, I can handle this by myself. Right. So, And, you know, I, I spoke to both of y'all on the phone earlier, so I'm not really... I, first of all, I didn't even got my glasses on, so I can't even read half the comments that is coming through. And then I know the ones that are coming through with love got the power sign and the what's up sign. Um, right, that's what's wrong with this thing. Right problem, yeah, whoever has a problem, whatever problem they have, that's really on them, you see? Because I, I don't do mess. I don't do problems. I don't get into people's business like that. I wanted to speak to both of y'all. You're both in town, you know, so... And if you are in the room and sitting on the other side of the room and then Ty has to keep, you know, why not sit there and we just all have this great, magnificent conversation about how he's going to blow up. See, that's what should be in the comments. Not that crazy nonsense. It should be, where, where's the show at tonight? The comments should be saying, when's the next album coming out? Man, you hot. Not why you sitting there. That's childish. Well, that guy, who did, that guy who did that, you know, he, 
he got he got something between his own self that he don't know what's going on. You know, that's not our fault. You know, he wants to find out how to do things. So, right. Right. He just yeah, like you said, Ty got to where he's at because he has management. You can't do this by yourself. You have to have somebody managing while he's in the studio doing this, that, and the other. The manager's on his um in his lane doing manager stuff, arranging shows, arranging deals, because um whoever said whatever, I didn't get the interview through Ty himself. I got the interview through the manager. The the arrangement yeah. Yeah. came between the manager. The manager reached out and me and the manager had a conversation. Now some artists they may have managers that say, well, y'all go ahead and do your interview. So I don't get to talk to all managers, but when the managers are around, they let their presence be known because there's things that should and should not be said. So that's why the manager and I had a conversation. The manager lets you know the emails are coming, check the emails. I sent the songs and the pitches, you know, so... Um, we're going to pray for that person and pray that they get a manager that leads them to the next step. Like you, you're worldwide. You're traveling. You're not home sitting, just doing regular shows in the neighborhood. You're in Atlanta. You came from here. Atlanta might lead you to go to California. You know, you're doing your thing. And as a people, this color people, when we start attacking each other on little minor stuff, that's when it becomes big and stupid and ugly. So exactly. we don't do that on my show. We just have fun. We find out what each one of y'all know. Because I want to know what the manager does too for the artist. Because some artists feel, I can do it on my own. And you're letting us know, nah, it's a team, it's a process. It's steps that you got to take. Absolutely. It is. It's a brotherhood, yeah. It's a brotherhood and that's what we have. And we got to... There's a lot of things going on right now. But we shake that stuff off, you know. But I just want to answer him because he took, he put the little slick comment in there. I just want to answer him because if he saw me face to face, he wouldn't do that. See what I'm saying? Right. That's what people do behind this internet. That's what it is. So, right. all good. I'm a grown man. So, Terrence, to you, that, that's your answer. Right, you know, right. Don't so, to get you said the internet, do you think that, um, I don't know, does, is the internet more helpful into seeing the negative stuff real quick or is it you yeah. know you can see it real quick it come with it yeah it, it come, come with, with the it. game it come it with, with the game we used to it we shake all of that off i do he do you know i can't do nothing for you g you know what i'm saying you know if you right. step the right way it could have been a different story but come on man don't be hating on this man and that's all you're doing you see me, I don't, I don't pay no attention. It's good vibes only my way. You know what I'm saying? Mine too. I don't care about one opinion. Exactly. I right, that. right. Because one opinion, sometimes, uh, well, like you said, you can't care about one opinion. Like the other day, somebody said something to me about me being older and whatnot. I was like, man, you look I really got to say about it. You look and then good. somebody else came back and said, yeah, it was their opinion. <laughs> So I have to shake it off. You know, I got to shake off some stuff too sometimes. So I'd be, I'd be glad that I don't have my glasses on because I can't see all the bullshit that comes through the, um, <laughs> the line sometimes. So we're going to get back to your show tomorrow. So what time does the show start? Uh, the show from 10 to 3. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I'll probably go on a little bit before Key Glock. I don't know exactly what time. We'll, we'll find out once we get to the venue. Uh-huh, uh -huh. Right. So after this show, do you have any other shows that's going to come up or you, you know, like you said, you're going to be here for a couple of days and then you're going to go back home. Do you have anything else planned after this show? Um, Not not no shows right now. You know, uh -huh. this is the only show right now. Uh, uh -huh. We just had to have this show. But like I said, back home, it ain't nothing going on. You know, mm -hmm. like, I can't even capitalize off my song being on the radio. So we had to right. get up, get out, make some shape, you know. Right. Um, as far as being here for the week, we just trying to network, build. We might hit up a few studios, 
You know what I'm saying? We're gonna we're gonna get out and pass out a few um flyers, a few posters. Mm -hmm. Um the C D not ready to come out yet, you know, so right. we're not gonna get that out yet. But we here to build, network, um, whatever. I'm gonna go with the flow kind of guy, you know. So whatever yeah. basically mm -hmm. come in hand, we gonna we're gonna we're gonna jump in the head first and, and, and run with it. All well, right. Well, to add to that, to add to that question, we got some offers for more shows. So we're, uh -huh. gonna, we're gonna handle this first. Right, right. You said let's do one thing at a time. When we get back, then we just, I'm pretty sure you're going to have a million offers on the table. People's going to be calling you all over. Come on, let's make this thing happen. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, you got to start, start somewhere. And we appreciate you for having us off gate, you know what I mean? Right, right. And I appreciate, you know, right back at you for calling and saying, let's do this. So what style of rap? do you feel that you're doing i i heard so many different styles of rap the other day somebody told me they do struggle rap and i was like what's struggle rap? <laughs> so what style of rap do you fit into i'm gonna say i gotta go with only thing i can think of is neo trap if anybody mm -hmm. me basically like new trap you know i'm uh -huh. not afraid of image of the trap is the only way out, but I did come up in the trap. Mm -hmm. Like I said, ain't no cap in my raps. I did what I right. had to do. You know, I ain't real, real proud of it, but, you know, I'm trying right. to focus on music now, and that's all that matters. You know, it's in, what's in the past is in the past, you know? Right. The past is over with this. The new stuff that's going on right now, and then, hey, today we in the new trap. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like even when I was hanging out the barbershop the other day, they called that the trap because they are actually open almost 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They be out there working hard, cutting hair, and stuff like that, throwing parties and stuff like that. So that word trap, when people hear it, they always want to put like, of course, the negative side to it, but there's also a lighter side to it. It brings out like a lot of artists. If people wasn't in the trap making music, doing stuff, they'd be just crazy and doing other stuff. So did music save you or what did music do for you in your life? I can't say music saved me because I, I found out what I wanted to put all my energy, all my focus towards. And I'd rather grind for myself and my future than go you know, work a nine to five for somebody and pave their dreams, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm just fortunate to have the mindset I got. Right, right. That's what's up. That's what's up. So you had named um, some hard hitters uh, when we started talking. What did you take away from listening to the people that you look up to in the music? Like DMX, that's my man right there. What did you take away from DMX? Uh, X was just so real, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. he, that dude went through a lot, you know, that dude went through a lot. And uh, mm -hmm. me growing up, I had a lot of uncles, and that's how I got turned on to X in the first place, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. right. With, uh, you know what I'm saying, listening to X, and, and X a real ass nigga. The way I say it, man, yeah. X could have been in Jay Z spot, if if he wouldn't uh you know, end up going down the path he went down, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. As far yeah. as X, J Cole, Ti, you know what I'm saying? Fifth and all them, right? Uh, Ti, Ti talk about that trap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, he talk about the streets, you know. He he also deal with the ladies. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm, Trying to take a different approach this year with my boss moves. I got something on there for the ladies. And okay, I'm ready to ask you. You got something for the ladies coming out? Yeah, I got, I got, I got a couple of joints for the ladies. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So is, is the music just like? Can you dance to it? Can you like for my age? What 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 is my age generations gonna get from your music? Like you're looking at me like she's older. What do you have for us, the older generation? What I have for the older generation? Good question. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say a lot of OGs can look at me and see they self. Right. You know, um, 
uh, like I said, I, I never really degrade women in my music. So, you know, when I put out records for the ladies, mm -hmm. ages, age ain't nothing but a number. You know, <laughs> the music is going music is going to hit regardless. Right. It's going to speak for itself. Absolutely. Well, let me add to that. We got two. Uh -huh. Two. We got two joints on this album for the ladies. Yeah. Yeah. We got two joints coming out for the ladies on this album. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We think about all that when we record the music. So, as an executive producer, as him being with, with Stickham Records, uh -huh. that's what we look for. We're going to do stuff for the older crowd also. He also okay. brought me. All right. So, you know, like, like I said, of course, I'm older. And, you know, I like the music. Music is versatile. It's universal. You know what I'm saying? Some stuff be like, ooh, that's what they're going through these days. <laughs> And then some stuff you just want to be able to party and dance to at any age and whoever is doing it and stuff. So now you see that rap is, is mixing the singing in with the rapping. Is that also part of what you're going to do with your music too? You asking me if I'm going to mix the singing with the rapping? Yeah. I don't sing. I don't... I don't. <laughs> A lot of these rappers don't sing neither. None of them can sing neither. Not, I don't want to say that. A few of them can't sing neither, but they start humming. And I don't, I don't use auto. You said, I ain't doing that. I told you no already. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just stick to the, you know, I might hit a little, a little, you know, uh, I don't know what you could even call it, but <laughs> I don't do too much thinking about it. Right, right, right. So who's working with you? You got some artists you want to shout out that's working with you, or is your um, album coming out just you? No, no, no. I'm going to shout out some artists I got on there. Uh, I want to shout out my girl Tia Corinne. Mm -hmm. on there. That's one of the records we got for the ladies. Uh, my my dude OG Cash. Mm -hmm. Got some real, some, some real street gospel for him. All right. Cash, right. Cash, right yeah, yeah. OG Cash is here right we, now. We um, I also All right. What's up, OG Cash? We can't wait to hear you on the album, the music that's Stop. coming out. <laughs> OG Cash, go say what's up to the hey, people, up, man. man. Hey, good people. How y'all doing tonight? Hey, hey, what's going on? How you doing? Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. So I hear that you're getting ready to be on the album. You're getting ready to put your... Uh -huh. So tell everybody real quick what you do. Yes, I rap. I'm rap. i a rapper. I'm from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. OG uh -huh. Cash. At it's OG Cash at Instagram. And um, <laughs> me and uh, Ty Mola, we, we, we childhood friends. You know, we grew up. We like, we like my little brothers. We grew up together. Uh, we've been doing music for over 15 years now together. Uh -huh. We just did a, a song we're about to drop, was it the 6th, February 6th, and uh -huh. uh, Purpose, uh, Tom Mulder featuring me, OG Cash, and uh -huh. uh, yeah, we, big things coming, big things coming. All you know? right, all right, I can't wait to hear more about it, and then when it does come, make sure you set yourself with an interview with me so I can get your story as well. <laughs> yes, ma'am, oh, definitely, definitely, I appreciate you having me here. All right, and I appreciate you um, tuning in and being here. We was having a great conversation, and hey, it's networking. It's, um, it's a Saturday. Yeah. This is how it does. You know, yeah. whoever's in the room, we join in real quick. We find out what they do, and it is what it is. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, I, I can't wait to meet all of y'all one day soon, and um, oh, yeah. Yeah, give a big old party. Now, I'm going to do that one day. I'm going to yeah. give just like a big old party with all the interviews that I had. And then hope that everybody can come together and, um, you know, make it happen. And then the next time y'all come down, let me know. I know people that got a couple of spots and we see if we can get y'all up in there and uh, make it work that way as well. Hey, yes. certified, yes. certified. Yes. Well, thank you very much for having yes. me, having us, having my team, you know, from Carolina to Georgia. It's right. all I salute what you're doing, and sincerely, I appreciate you having me. You know, this is my second interview, so, you know, it's all a learning process, and uh -huh. I look forward to meeting you, too, and, you know, networking and building and just keeping this train rolling. Exactly, and I look forward to meeting you, too. So before we end it and everything, what is it, again, that you want everybody to know about Ty Moolah? 
who is Ty Mula? Ty Mula, the most underrated, most slept on Carolina artist. <laughs> I'm on their ass. My foot is on their necks. I'm coming, you know what I'm saying? And that's all I got to say, really. Let me most, most volume one. Let me add to that. We're going to keep our foot on their necks. That's, that's why we work hard, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> That came in there, the ones I had to straighten a few minutes ago. You know, it's stick them records. Don't get it twisted. It's Ty Mula, it's Ty Stick, it's OG Cash, it's Red Dragon. Red Dragon just came in, and um, the the song is produced by Major. I want to give Major a Major, shout out. Big salute, to my big up Major. I hope you in here. He probably in the studio, but um, he didn't come down on this trip with us. But you know, to, to answer that question earlier. The producer plays a major part. People can't get a hit record because they don't take the major steps that should be taken. Hence the right. work. The major right. we appreciate this work we put in. I want to give you some love too. You ain't here, but we love you, bro. Certified. And that's the key thing. That's the key thing that both of y'all kept saying all night. And um, hard work. Hard work, hard work. That's all I heard through the whole night. So if I had to take something away from the um, interview myself, I would take away saying that you are one hard-working guy. You don't go in the studio playing. It's just about the business. You're going to do what you have to do to make yourself succeed and be in success out here. You don't let the, the negative stuff, the past was the past, moving on to the future. It's all about hard work. The management team, I took away from that too, is important. It's a respect. It's a trust. It's a brotherhood that you have with each other that, hey, you in the studio, you do you, I'm the manager, I'm going to take care of the business, and we just going to make it happen. That's great, because people don't have that these days. We've been networking. They fade away so fast. People just fade out your life real fast. You're one person's friend one day, and the next day, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Fall out. And like you said earlier, if you're in the Atlanta area, if you come through Rebel tomorrow, come check us. Like you said, we're going to show our ass. It's up. I hear that. I hear that. I hope I can get out there. So before we end, I'm going to let the song rock for a minute. And then I sure do appreciate y'all coming through, hanging out with me for a while. We're going to get this thing played. <laughs> well, let's see if we can get it playing the right way. ATL about to see something they ain't seen before. That's what's up. Hey, you get ready to set us on fire, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I guess I got to do it through my computer. I got to do it this way. Having one of those internet things. I don't know. The internet just was doing me wrong tonight. <laughs> no bands. But I'm definitely going to put this in my playlist. And when I go out to this different little spots that I hang out with sometimes, I'm going to get them to play it on the air. I guess I'm just Thank you. Yes. Appreciate that. We need to Everybody, make sure y'all go check out Ty Mula. Hey, the video out there too on YouTube. Ty Mula come up with something. That's right. He's on YouTube. He's on all streaming media. He's out there. He's hot. He's got the new album that they're working on. He got to come up with something. They're going to be at Club Rebel tomorrow down in Atlanta. If you're out here, make sure you definitely pull up and check out his show, his performance. Artists, if you ain't got a manager, make sure you go get one. It was just a great pleasure talking with him. He said that if he was a, a flavor, he would be Polynesian sauce. And that is hot. So I'm telling you, it was great talking to you. We got to do this again. And hey, it's the interview with Booby Taylor show, y'all. I give all glory and honor to God that makes everything happen in my life. I appreciate every guest that comes on my show. When you put the new stuff out, send it my way. I'll get the playing on my end, and then we can do another interview, part two. Part two. We will <laughs> right, do. and then bring more artists with you, so this way we can get more comments. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We'll, we'll make it happen. All right. All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. You're very handsome. You're just very right. handsome. I know the women are going crazy over you. 
<laughs> I can't see the manager because he's all covered up, but I know he's probably handsome too. Hey, hey, manager. <laughs> all right. That's what's up. That's what's up. It was a pleasure talking with y'all. Y'all have a good evening. Y'all be safe tomorrow. Hey, I know you're going to make it hot in that place tomorrow, so oh, yeah. we're all looking forward uh, to it. When you snap some pictures, send me some pictures. If you got some parts of video, send it to me. I'll post them on my page, and we'll just keep this going. All right, let the people know um, we're going we're gonna to film the show on IG Live tomorrow. All right, so we're definitely going to watch it. Tomorrow they're going to film the show, IG Live, so everybody tune into his page tomorrow. Official time, Moolah. Make sure y'all catch him tomorrow at Club Revel. Make sure y'all get yourself a manager that can get you into different spots, different shows, different interviews. Networking is so important. Respect for each other. Looking out for each other. Lifting each other up. Let's lift each other up and keep that going. And keep that brotherhood going. It's you know? culture. Real yes, talk. yes, yes. It's all about the culture. <laughs> Okay, y'all. Y'all have a good night. Y'all okay, stay safe okay. tomorrow. And I'm going to definitely tune in and I'm going to be definitely watching the whole performance. So I'll be there. All right, for sure. Okay, thank you. Appreciate All right, y'all have a good night. Thank you. You All too. Right. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right. I got to come up with something. My girl says she want some dough.